We will get started. First question, Jonathan Fagan. Hi, Rafael. Um, what was your reaction to moving up as much as you did? And how would you evaluate the top picks of this draft, that, let's say the top four, considering that's where you always seem to draft? I don't, I don't know about always, but um, actually, maybe literally always, but uh, probably won't last forever. Um, uh, sorry, uh, you, I got sidetracked on that thought. You're asking me to evaluate the top of this draft. Is that correct? Yes. And what was your reaction when you got the news? Um, I, yeah, I think, you know, I was happy. Um, so, uh, I, I got in kind of, I was, I was actually on a flight, uh, from France to, uh, the U S and my Wi-Fi cut out. So, um, the first thing to come through were, were random texts. So I could tell we moved up, but I couldn't tell to where, and I couldn't tell how <laughs> I couldn't tell which pick. So it took me a little while to figure it out. So maybe I was a little more confused than normal. Um, but yeah, no, ha you know, generally happy. And then I, yeah, I, I think, I think the top of this draft is strong. I, I you know, um, I was just in Europe watching a couple of kids who are, you know, very talented and, um, and, and there's a, there, there are some guys here in the States and, um, in Australia. So like, yeah, there, I, I think the top of this draft, uh, is pretty strong. Any follow-up, Jonathan? Uh, no, I'm okay. I was. I noticed you said you were in France, but there's. I guess a lot of players in the top four come out of there these days. <laughs> I guess. I guess so. I mean, I, one of the cool things about our game is, and our league is, this truly become a worldwide league. And so, um, yeah. So I, I do think it makes evaluating talent more difficult because. Um, just like I, I think a men wasn't wasn't super easy for people to um, to evaluate because he came from OTE, which no one had done before. And so similarly, I think I think this year there's going to be quite a few guys coming from backgrounds that are a little bit different. Um, and it, it may, does make the evaluation process a little harder, but it doesn't mean the, the players are less talented. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Bose. Ben. We'll move on. Vanessa Richardson. Hi, Rafael. Hope France has been fun. How are you? Uh, France was, I don't know about fun, but it, it's beautiful. <laughs> Paris is a beautiful city. I was there for a few days uh, and I'm good. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, from just kind of a broad perspective, new practice facility, amazing young core. Now you have the number three pick. Just how exciting is this chapter uh, in your career as a GM as there's so much potential and so much possibility? Um, I don't. Yeah, um, I am really I, I'm, I'm super excited. I, I, I can answer that part. Um, I think you know, right now it's kind of, you know, there's just a lot of work to be done. So I'm kind of more mm -hmm. focused on that than, than, um, than the rest of it. But, um, but yeah, I, I do think, you know, we, we like our team and we like the position we're in. And we think that um, if we did nothing this summer, that we would be a better team next year, mm -hmm. just because of the growth internally of all of our young players, as well as um, getting some of the guys who are injured um, back, hopefully, and, and able to play. Um, and and so, yeah, so so the possibility of adding another young, talented player through the draft, um, or or through trade, or however mm -hmm. that ends up that ends up working out. Yeah, we're we're excited about that possibility. Thank you. Adam Spolin. Rafael, can you kind of compare the top of this draft to the last three? Um, no, <laughs> only because I haven't thought it through. Um, you know, I think I think last year's draft was was a different draft than we'd seen in a while, just because. Um, you know, there's so much attention just focused on one guy. Um, and, and that, that, that wasn't the case in the, the two drafts before it. And I don't think it'll be in the case this year. So maybe in that sense, I think this draft is more like 
the draft two years ago, three years ago, and, and a little bit less like last year's draft. Do you see like the high end prospects in this draft as there were in the last few? Yeah. I mean, I, time will tell, right. Like, you know, you just, it's so hard to evaluate 18 year old players and, and generally the top few picks are, you know, 18 at most 19 year old guys. So, um, so it it is, it's, it's just really hard and it's, it's unfair to the players to say, that they will or will not be anything. Um, but, but there, there are really talented guys in this draft. I, I'm, I'm, I do believe that. Michael Scotto. Hey, Rafael Hope all as well, brother. Um, just wanted to ask you, you, you kind of mentioned about like, if you guys didn't do anything, how you guys would have growth on its own as a team because of, of your young guys maturing. So like with that in mind, I don't know if feasible is the right adjective, but is it in a sense to add another young guy, especially another high lottery guy when you already have um, a lot of really young, promising guys already on the roster? Yeah. I mean, yes, <laughs> I, I, it's for sure feasible. I mean, and, and we would do it right. Like I think, um, yeah. That, that, I think the, the simple answer, the simple answer is yes. Um, I guess to give you a little bit more context, there is no rule that requ- like a men didn't start the vast bulk of the games this year, which was a change for us because um, Jalen started immediately and jo- Jabari started immediately. Um, but I, I love the men's progress. I, I, I don't think that you, that the only way to develop, is if you immediately start and get, get handed 35 minutes a game. Um, I don't even think it's necessary to play right away. Like I think that there have been hall of fame basketball players that had to work their way up. There's been a lot of them. And so, um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, I do think minutes will be more crunched for us um, next year than they have been in the past, but honestly they were crunched for us last year. And um uh, you know, both the men and Cam kind of fought for, earned, and 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 ultimately got their minutes. And and I, I don't, there, there's just, there, I don't think there's only one way to develop young players. I don't think there's only one way to build a roster out. So, um, we we definitely would, uh, we definitely would draft someone and and bring them into the fold if if uh, if it makes sense. And just to follow up on that, um, given that you have this third overall pick and. I believe you could trade up to, if you wanted to, theoretically five first round picks. Given the roster where it is, are you more or less um, open to that idea of packaging a ton of picks and trying to acquire a, a star type of guy, given where the roster is and some of the progress you've seen from some of your young guys that you've already drafted? I I don't think I, I'm not, I'm not, trying to it's not a cop out i just think it's true i I don't think we're either more or less willing i think you know my job is to um take every phone call for sure if someone's got an idea but also to make it and um and talk to every team about every possibility and try and figure out if there's something that we think makes us a better team and organization both in the short term and the long term and so um I'll do that. I did that three years ago last year. I mean, there's really only two times uh, a year that, that there, that, that the market in the NBA gets a little bit liquid kind of around the trade deadline and around the draft. And so we need to make every phone call and have every discussion and we'll do that. But, um, you know, um, you know, we certainly won't do any deals that we don't think are really good for us. And, you know, and, We'll just balance it all out and make the best decisions we can. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Lashard Dinkley. Hello, Mr. Stone. Uh, so does moving up from nine to three, does that make it more likely that you're willing to keep that pick? Does it really change your mind one way or the other, or is it still just kind of part of the whole process? No, I think it's part of the whole process. I, I think I think the the caveat to it always was, we'd be willing to move it if we got something that was worth us moving it. And, but at the same time, valuing the player, we, you know, we think we'd bring in. So, um, 
probably, you know, um, at least a slightly better chance that we'll like the player more at three, probably a really a, a much better chance that we'll like the player more at three. Um, or at least we'll, sometimes that's not true. We, a higher likelihood that we'll, that we'll be very interested in a player at three. That's probably the better way of saying it, but also potentially maybe others will too. And so may, maybe, maybe other teams will be more aggressive in trying to trade in for that. So I, I think it just all balances out at the end. Thank you. Jackson. Kaplan. Hey, Rafael. Uh, hey, Jackson. You mentioned earlier that you think this team could improve even if you made no changes this off season. So how much does your, your draft philosophy and your overall evaluation going into the draft, going with, you know, fit versus best player available change, if at all, after a season in which the team just went 41 and 41 and saw a lot of internal growth. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we've been pretty fixated on best, uh, best available talent. I just think, I just think it's so hard um it's so hard to make it in the NBA, let alone make it like, like, let alone kind of survive a bunch of years, let alone not just have a good career, but be somebody who like drives winning in an impactful way. Um, that it's, I, I think in my, for me and in my job, I, I, I'm just, I guess I'm just not confident enough in me to be able to like point out that in any given draft, this point guard, this shooting guard, this small forward, this power forward, this center, will be will be really successful and so i think if we if we um if we become confident that a player has a chance to become special or very successful in our league we'll just we'll just that would be the player we would take um as opposed to to fixating on on how he fits with our current team michael shapiro hi rafael um, I want to ask you about your, your coaching staff in this scenario. It seemed like last year they did a lot to bring Amen and Cam along. Does the group you have in place give you confidence that a rookie can get brought up to speed in the appropriate time? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we have a really good coaching staff. I think Ime does an awesome job. Um, he was really hard on those two guys, um, which I think was really good for them. And um, if we, if we bring somebody in, I think, I think he'll do the same thing. Um, and we, we have a ton of confidence in our G league program and I think it really, really helped cam. Um, and um, I would not hesitate to, uh, uh, to, to utilize that kind of a, as a way of developing the guy as well. Ben DeBose. Sorry about the connectivity issues earlier. Um, Rafael, how much of a tear jump is there from pick nine, which was the odd slot going in to top three where you ended up? You touched on the, that a little bit earlier, but just how significant is the bump that you got today? I mean, the honest answer is it, it, it depends on all these other teams. So like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, our board tends to look kind of sort of like other teams boards, but, but even, you know, but not identical. And so, um, yeah, I just, I like the real answer is, I don't know. I just, I don't know where everybody will end up valuing every player. I, I would guess it's going to be a pretty sizable jump for us, but you know, I, it's just, it's hard to know. Chancellor Johnson. Hey, Rafael. Um, obviously a couple of years ago, um, you uh, and this organization elected, you can call it a choice or if you want to call it a, a gamble to kind of prioritize um, draft picks over maybe players at the time in the James Harden trade. Today, we saw it kind of go in your favor. Just kind of think about that process and uh, where you guys, when you made that decision to, to you know, a moment like this, what, what kind of comes to mind to you uh, for you in general? Um, I don't know. I, I think um, I felt really confident in that in, in the process then. So I, I don't, I don't, it, you know, I don't think a whole lot's changed for me. I mean, I'll, I'll walk you through the thinking at the time, which was just that um, we want to win championships and that really hasn't changed for us. And so um, we, we didn't think that there was a trade that set us up to do that um, better than um than trying to get a lot of picks like that that's kind of that's really simple like and and i guess just organizationally we're, we're not afraid to take a little bit of risk 
and and some pain um to to give ourselves a chance to be really special and really good um we're definitely i i, I don't i want to make clear we are not really special or really good right now but that is that is our goal and our goal is to to get there as quickly as we can and to stay there as long as we can and so looking back i guess three years ago now at the decisions we made it was that be, with those with those goals in mind i think the decision was actually a pretty was at least for me a very you know pretty easy one and and um you know and, and i think uh, by the time we ultimately ended up making kind of it, it, it wasn't just one trade either but it kind of a series of trades um at the time we made the very first one i think everybody internally in our organization was completely aligned on the rationale for why and and kind of you know the process for how to go about it quick follow up to that have you ever thought about the patience the organization has also shown as well because when you make a move like that there's also not a guarantee that you might be able to see some of this through have you have you given that any thought at all i mean i knew i was going to be patient um i i get i think you're asking uh have i thought about the fact that tillman was willing to be patient as well um and the answer is yeah i i mean i you know um I'm thankful for it, but you know, he, to his credit, he never really wavered. Like, you know, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean that all, that it was all good times and that there wasn't some real pain along the way, but, um, but you know, but I, you know, I think we, we, we kind of, you know, we understood what we were doing and, and, um, and, you know, and we went about it. I, to, to, I, the, the one area that like, so it's not like he wavered and had to be talked back into it, but, but the willingness and the to understand at an early time in his kind of ownership tenure, um, the whys and and the strategy behind it, and to allow me to execute on it, Tillman definitely deserves full credit for. We'll take two more, Brian Fairfield. Uh, Mr. Stone, you said in the exit interviews that you were happy with where your team was. You were happy with the the players that you had. At that time when you all were doing the evaluation of team needs, did that change today with the way that you all were able to get into the top three? And how early will you get with uh, Coach Udoka to start evaluating this? Um, there's a, I it didn't change. I like I, I still I still they haven't played any more games, so so I still like my team. Um, um, uh, I'm talking to Ime in about. I don't know, 20 minutes, we're gonna have dinner, but um, I, I, I don't, I don't like, I don't think we're talking about the stuff. I don't think we're gonna be talking about the stuff you maybe think we're talking about. Yeah. I think we're just going to catch up because we haven't seen each other in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, like I, I think the fact that I like my team doesn't mean I don't have a job to do. You don't, you don't go, kind of say, Hey, I like my team. I'm just going to go to bed for six months. You know, you still talk to everybody, do all the work and, and and make sure that standing pat is the right thing to do um with the reality being that you never stand pat we're we're gonna draft someone or we're gonna trade the pick there's a there's there's kind of only two options and so um you know so we'll, we'll do you know we'll, we'll we'll do all the work and try and figure out what's best for us i and brian i if, if i just completely missed your question because maybe i did i i i apologize just ask it again <laughs> Yeah, I, what I was asking was, you know, you, you, I know the players that you have on your team, and at the end, you know, you all didn't know your draft status at the time. So, do you say, well, do we want to add another small forward? Do we want to add another center? Does that change now, knowing that at that point in time you didn't know if you were going to be in this top three spot, but now that you are, does that does those needs change as far as getting that player that that you were probably look that, that you may have been looking at? No, uh -uh. we no, we feel we feel really good about our about our team and 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 so that doesn't no, it doesn't change at all. Thank you. Yep. Last question, Adam Spolin. It's been a while since a team has traded a top four pick. I was wondering if you had any ideas of why that is, and have you did, did you get any did you get any offers over the last few years where you thought that you were like close to maybe accepting it? Um. No to the latter one, um, but you know, like, but we, but we, but we did talk a lot, you know, if that makes sense. And so, um, 
but no, um, we, I, I wouldn't say that we got, we, we got really close in it, in any of those years to moving the pick. Um, um, that, you know, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm pausing because I'm just thinking back to make sure I didn't, I didn't, uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think we got particularly close, but you know, like there are definitely some conversations where people suggested that maybe they do something that was really interesting. Then it didn't work out. They went a different direction, something like that. So, um, yeah, anyway, no, we didn't get particularly close. Um, and then in terms of why, uh, picks haven't moved as much recently i mean i yeah i just i have no idea i you know a lot of it is where you're at and and what you're trying to accomplish and um you know i i do think that like we we definitely like you should always be open to trading stuff and we were we have been the last couple of years um but but also our team didn't look like it does today and so so maybe Maybe it's more likely today. I, you know, I, I just don't know, and and I don't know why others haven't haven't moved top four picks either. I I, I think it's very specific to um, the team that initially has the pick, and then the team trying to climb in to get there. So, um, and 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 honestly, there are teams that you that I would look from the outside and be like, they should absolutely be trying to trade into this draft, and 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 maybe they don't agree. Maybe, you know, so like it's all eye of the beholder stuff. So. Um, yeah, uh, I wish I could have given you a better answer. There's a lot of, I don't know is in, in there. So I apologize. Thank you, Rafael. We appreciate your time and thank Thanks, you so much for joining. Take care. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you.